Welcome back, everybody. My name is Nick. This is Swiftful Thinking, and we're moving through this playlist. In the last video, we learned about structs. Structs are incredibly important, possibly my favorite type. Uh, but in this video, we're going to look at enums. Enums are very similar to structs in the way that they work behind the scenes, so how they're stored in memory and things like that. But there's one key difference that's really important, and it's that at runtime, we know all of the cases or versions of an enum. Whereas a struct, we don't need to know all of the cases at runtime. And to give you guys just like a quick basic example of what I'm talking about here, uh, imagine you're building an app like a restaurant app. And a restaurant app is going to have a bunch of cuisines. So maybe there's Italian food, Japanese food, American food, all the types of food. And so now let's pretend there's two versions of this app. In one version, we're going to download all of that data from the internet. And then using that data, we're going to figure out what are all the cuisines in our app. In that case, when we were writing our code, we don't know all of the cuisines that are going to be in the app. And so in that case, we would probably use a struct for those cuisines. But in another version of our app, we might know while we're writing the code, every single cuisine that's going to be in the app. So if we know every single case, if we know American, Japanese, Italian, Greek, et cetera, et cetera, and every single version we already know, then we're going to use an enum. And so in this video, we're really just going to focus on how to use enums if we can. At a very high level, if we can use an enum, we probably would prefer it to a struct. But as I just explained, there are many cases where we can or cannot. Welcome, everybody. In the last video, we looked at structs. Structs are a little difficult to work with, but we love structs because they're super fast. They're thread safe. They're a great way to be moving data around your app. In this video, we're going to look at enums, which are very similar to structs with one major difference, which is that for an enum, we have all of the known cases at runtime. So let me explain what that means. I'm going to right-click the new file. I'm going to right-click the navigator, create a new playground page. Let's call this enums. And I'm going to start this with a comment, literally that enums are, enum is the same as struct, except we know all cases at runtime. And let me explain what that means. But before we get into it, if you're with me in the object-oriented programming video, two videos back, we talked about the stack versus the heap. Both structs and enums are in the stack. So they work the same way in terms of memory. All right, so let's create a struct here and call this our car mob. So we're going to have maybe an app that has is selling cars or something like that. And then every car is going to have a brand. So there's a brand name for the car. We'll make that a string. Every car will also have a model. So the model name will also be a string. And now I can create a car. So let's say car one of type car model. And I'll set it equal to a car model with a brand of maybe Ford and a model of Fiesta, Ford Fiesta. All right. And now let's create two more cars. So I'm going to do car two and three. And this one will also be a Ford. We'll do a Ford Focus. And this one will change the brand to a maybe Toyota. And this will be a Toyota Camry. In hindsight, probably should have picked cooler cars, but we're going to go with this for now. All right. Now, this obviously works, but you'll notice that brand is a string. And so in reality, although we only put in car brand names here, we could put anything at all into this string. So for example, we coffee. And clearly, that is not the name of a car brand. So in this situation, this might get a little weird if maybe the data gets corrupt or some other developer is using this wrong. And so in this situation, we might want to make an enum so that we restrict brand to specific values only. So if we wanted it to only be specific brands, we could use an enum to do. That. Before we even get that far, let's first make another struct. I'm going to put it up here and call this the car brand. All right. So car brand, and we'll open the brackets, and every car brand will have a title. I'll make it of type string. 
And so now instead of just passing in a string for the brand, we're going to pass in a car brand. So when we go to create these, I'll comment these out. We'll do var car one and we'll set it equal to a car model. But this time you see that we have car brand here and not a string. So before this said string, now it says car brand. And so it's going to ask us what do what is the car brand that we are adding? So we could add in here a car brand with the title of Ford. And the model will be Fiesta again. And I'm going to copy and paste that two more times. So we have car two and car three. And the model of this one will be Focus and this one will be the Toyota Camry. So what is the benefit of doing this? Well, now we could create some sort of variable called brand one, set it equal to car brand. So now we can reuse this bit, bit of code here and maybe var brand two, set it equal to this. Okay, so our code is a little bit better, but we still have the ability here to put in anything that we want. So again, we could end up with something that is not really a car brand. And so, the reason we would put it as a struct would be if at runtime, when we are developing our app, we do not know all of the potential brands that the car could be. So if there's like an infinite number of car brands with different titles that are coming from our database that we don't already know, well, then we would leave this as a struct and we would just try to add some validation to make sure that the strings are always correct. But if, for example, we know all of the brands that are in our app, so maybe all of the brands are just Ford and Toyota, and we're never going to have any other brand, well, then we can make an enum rather than a struct. So now I'm going to create an enum, an enumeration, and I'm going to call this car brand option, and I'll open the brackets. And the main difference between an enum and a struct is that in a struct, we can configure it with totally custom data. For an enum, we have to tell it all of the potential versions of this enum that there are ever going to be. So we can create a case for Ford, which is one of our brands, and a case for Toyota, which is one of our brands. And so now that we have this enum, which is the car brand option, let's try to use that as our brand instead. So up here, I'm going to put car brand option being the enum. And so now when I go to create this code here, I'm going to do var car one equals car model. We can see that it is a car brand option. And so if I press the period on this, I can see all of the options that this can be. So now I can't put in like coffee. The compiler is going to yell at me because that is not a car brand option. But if I press the period, I can now put in Ford or Toyota. So I can put Ford here and our model will still be Fiesta. I'm going to do car two and three, and we'll do Ford, Ford, and Toyota, and Ford Focus, and Toyota Camry. All right, so this is kind of the main use case of the enum. We do prefer enums when we can use them, because this is much easier to write in our code than have to manually do something like this, or manually type out the actual name every time. The problem, though, is that we need to know all of these cases when we are writing the code. So if, if I know that there's only ever going to be Ford, Toyota, maybe there's a Honda, I can add these cases. But if I need to rely on like the database to first fetch all of the cars to then figure out all of the cases, well, then I don't know when I'm writing this code, what all of these cases would be. And I wouldn't want to use an enum. So enum is great if you can use it, but you can only really use it if you know all of the cases. Another way to write this, just so you guys can have it, is we could just separate these by commas. And this is the exact same thing. These are all just cases, just another way to write it in Swift. I'll put a note here that the enums are stored in memory the same way as a struct. But the difference is that, but we cannot mutate. So in the last video, we learned how to mutate a struct. And that's because we can change the struct into whatever other version of the struct we want. For this car brand option, there is no mutation. These are all immutable. It's only ever going to be a Ford.
It's never going to, we're never going to change what a Ford is in our code. I can, however, still get a title from this. So in here, I can create a computed variable called title of type string, and I can open the brackets. Again, if you don't know what a computed variable is, it's basically a function that this closure executes every time you call the variable name. I covered this in the functions video about four or five videos back. Now, inside this enum, we are calling this computed variable called title, which is going to run this function here. And so now when we are inside this option, we need to figure out which title to return. Is this option currently a Ford? Is it a Toyota? Is it a Honda? We don't really know. And so here we can say if self is equal to Ford, open the brackets. So self meaning the option itself. So in my code, if I say var Ford, the Ford brand of type car brand option, set it equal to Ford. If I call Ford brand dot title, version of self that I'm calling it on is the Ford case. So when I look at self here, it's which version are we using right now? And we're going to use Ford in this example. So if self is Ford, the title should be Ford. And we'll say else, if self is equal to Toyota, return Toyota. And then else, we'll just say maybe a return, a default value. Now this works, but this is one of the best places that we can start to use switch statements. So I've not used a switch statement yet in this playlist, but the problem with this if else statement right now is that we might be missing one of the cases. So for example, we have Honda here. And if we ran this code, self is not, when self is Honda, it is not Ford, it is not Toyota. And so the title for Honda is gonna be the default value. And that's obviously not what we want. And so one way to avoid that, when you have all of the cases, you can then switch on all of the cases. And it's basically an if statement, but it ensures that you're using all of the cases that are possible. So up here, I'm gonna write a switch statement and I will switch on self. So just like we had if self, now we're gonna switch on self, open the brackets. And then as we are switching, it's gonna say, Okay, for each of the cases in self, what do you want to do? And so the first case we're going to do is Ford. And I'll put a colon here. So if the case, if self, the case of self is Ford, we will return Ford. If the case is Toyota, we will return Toyota. And I'll delete this from my code here. And I want to show you that when we use this switch statement, the compiler actually tells us that, hey, you use this switch, but you didn't cover all of the cases of self. So this red error will not let us even run our app right now because the switch is not exhaustive. There are cases that we have not covered in this statement. And obviously that is Honda. So if I go to fix this, Honda is going to pop in here and now I can return Honda. All right, one other way that I just want to show you guys, if we didn't want to actually explicitly have all of the cases, I could also add a default value. So maybe I comment this out and we instead use a default value. Uh, maybe default. So this is another way to default. So all of the cases that we don't consider would fall into the default. It is obviously better to cover your cases than to use a default, but at least you guys know how to do it now. All right, so now that we have this title, of course, we can come down here and we can call for brand dot title. So I can print that out. And if I run this correctly, this should print out Ford. Awesome. All right, that is it for enums. Again, we cannot mutate them. So it's not like we can edit this title. But if we know at runtime all of the options, then we can create an enum, set up our cases, and then use that in our app. And that's going to help us write better code, something like this versus something like this or this. There are absolutely cases where we should still use a struct or we should still use an enum. At this point, you should just know how to use both. All right, thank you guys for watching. As always, I'm Nick, this is Swiffle Thinking, and I will see you in the next video.